Joining us now on the program, he authored, a, 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 well, a recent study that actually suggests in Ontario that we should increase the gas tax and also add more toll roads. Well, all right. What is this whole thing about? Joining us now on the show is the professor emeritus at Trent University, Harry Kitchen, is on 610 CKTV. Good afternoon, Harry. Good afternoon. So why did you do this study? Who asked you? Well, the RCCAO, which is a, uh, an organization in Toronto, um, has had a strong interest in, in uh, issues around financing public transit and transportation for a number of years. I did a study for them, a much longer study in 2008, another one in 2013, and then a more recent one just this year. And all of these studies made the same recommendation, as indeed have a whole lot of other studies that have been on, on, on this issue. And, you know, how do you finance public transit and how do you finance transportation? A huge issue. Uh, and particularly if you're in the Golden Horseshoe or the Greater Toronto area, and if you're in Metro Vancou- Vancouver or, or uh, the urban area around Montreal, I mean, these are huge issues. And so they asked me to take another look at it and, uh, and okay. come up with some kind of recommendation of what ought to be done. When it comes to funding right now, I guess we're falling short? Well, there's no question we're falling short. I mean, but what's happening at the moment is that basically the money that goes into funding public transit and transportation comes out of general revenues. And so that means it's money that's paid for an income tax, sales tax, could be the fuel tax. The current fuel tax, the provincial fuel tax that's uh, applied, just goes into the general revenue pot at the provincial government. It's not set aside specifically for transportation or transit at all. And one of the recommendations I made in this report is let's get a dedicated fund or an earmarked fund, whatever you want to call it. Money goes into that fund. The money in that fund goes to pay. And it's based on a very simple principle. You use a service, you should pay for a service. And I guess the easiest way to make sure that those are using or paying is through a gas tax, because if you use a car, you buy gas. That's right. And it's simple to administer. We already have it. You don't have to put a new administrative structure in place. You don't have to build up any uh, technical infrastructure to collect the tax. It's already there. And, I mean, one of the things that comes up is, well, why do you come up with 23 cents, you know, which is what I came up with in okay, the Okay, well, well, where is it right now? A lot of people well, probably right don't now, know that. It's 14.7 cents per liter for gas, 14.3 cents per liter for diesel fuel. But those rates were set in 1992. So if you think about that, ever since then, inflation's gone up by over 50%. I, th- I said to myself, well, we'll, well okay, hey, hey we'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold on a minute here. Let's go back. What if we'd increased all along the fuel tax on an annual basis by the rate of inflation? Yeah, where would if, we be? If we had done that, we would be at 23 cents this year. And is uh, that how you arrived at that number? That's how I arrived at that number. And so what we need to do is we need to be at 23 cents to have the same buying power or the same purchasing power that we had in 1992. So what's happened? The gas tax, the revenue we're getting from the gas tax, has fallen dramatically short of its purchasing power when you compare it with the time it was uh, put in place. Another recommendation coming out of your report is looking at adding more toll roads. How would you see that incorporated in Ontario? Well, I mean, there are a number of jurisdictions in a number of countries that have got into uh, toll road pricing. Um, and they're, they're rec- once again, you know, they've been recommended by all kinds of organizations. Uh, and um, we have the 407 is privately owned, but it is a toll road. The whole road is tolled. The easiest way to implement tolls to get started in the whole process is to take the high occupancy vehicle lanes or the HOV lanes along the Queen Elizabeth, they're around the 403, they're around Toronto. And some of them now have, of course, been set up for the Pan Am Games just for on, on, on apparently a temporary basis. Uh, the easiest thing is to take those lines and to put a toll on them. And what happens, I mean, you've probably driven, I've driven in a number of cities, a number of places where they have HOV lanes. You know, if you've got two people in a car or three people in a car, you sail right through while all the other lanes beside you are congested. What does it tell you? We've got a lot of single occupant cars, one person in a car. So what they've done in the States in some places is, is to say, let's generate a bit of revenue from these HOV lines. If you want to be a single occupant and you want to drive in that lane, you can pay a price to do it. And, you know, with a transponder uh, mechanism, the technology is there to do it. It's there to do it pretty easily. You can let the people do it. And you might, that might be the easiest way to start, is to take those HOV lanes and start putting a toll on those. No. So, you know, if you want to drive in a lane and you say, I don't want to sit in this congestion, I'm willing to pay a price, I get out and drive in this lane where I'm willing to pay a price, all the other people who either, A, can't afford to pay it or don't want to, are better off because they've got less traffic to contend with. 
in your research, did you take a look at any other city that had I- installed a model like that, and how is it working for them? Well, it, there, are, there are some. Yeah, I've done this in the past. I didn't for this particular project, but I have done it in the past. Because I've heard of that as US. well, but, but yeah, in, in the United States. Is yeah. there any big city that's done it? Uh, in California? Is it Sacramento? Uh, I'd have to go back and look at it. it. They have done it in some of the big uh, U.S. cities. And any idea as to whether it's generating the revenue that they'd hoped, and does it ease some of the gridlock? Well, it, yeah, it does generate. It, it, it generates right. It certainly eases gridlock. I mean, one of the problems you've got, and and the gridlock is a huge thing, and of course all the problems it causes with uh, greenhouse gas emissions and congestion. I mean, there are international studies. The Organization for Economic Cooperation, for example, have done a, a, a lot of studies on cities, and they've got huge estimates on the lost economic activity in the you know Golden Horseshoe and the Greater Toronto area because of congestion. So we've got to do something. We've, we've got to get this changed. I mean, we can't be losing jobs and losing business because we've got tons of congestion, uh, clogged roads, environmental problems that are caused by it. So, you know, something has to happen. Your report also suggests that the higher cost of driving would almost force motorists to buy more efficient cars, reduce the distance that they travel, and also cut greenhouse gas emissions. Well, yeah. Is, is that it, proven it, out anywhere? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There are lots of studies in the U.S. that take a look at what happens. And, so, and I didn't reference them, reference them in this. I referenced them in this report. I didn't talk about them. But in the 2013 report I did for the same organization, there's a, a discussion of, of how this is work but there is all the empirical evidence that's been done on this suggests you raise prices uh, you do lead to less traffic congestion I mean, it just seems it just seems that gas prices have been rising exponentially over the last five or six years and all i've seen is more urban sprawl and people yeah. buying in some cases bigger vehicles well you know what uh, that may be true, but maybe it would have been worse if it hadn't been right. I mean, the problem with the rising gas prices in the last few years, it's been j- basically by, from the oil companies. It hasn't been from the taxes. Yeah, I guess all I was trying to say is without doing the study at the level that you've done, I'm just looking around and going, increased gas prices hasn't seemed to change our habits at all. Maybe we have to increase them more. Yeah, maybe. Uh, where, where can people find out, uh, find out uh, this study oh, in its entirety? Uh, www.rccao.com. Dot com. And that's the Residential and Civil Construction yeah. Alliance of Ontario. Yeah. They're yeah. the people that asked you to do this study. Yeah. And the author is Professor Emeritus at Trent University, Harry Kitchen. Thanks for your time. Great work. Okay, thank you. Right, bye-bye. Thank you very much. That's some good insight there from a guy who obviously knows, right? That guy's looked at it. More toll roads increasing the gas tax. Boy, that would be political suicide, wouldn't it? But when you look at it and realize it hasn't changed in 23 years, it makes a really good point that while the revenue level may be constant, its buying power is about 50% of where we were 23 years ago. That inhibits our ability to do things and, and get stuff done.